Chronic pain is common in multiple sclerosis, impacting over half of people with the condition. It's invisible and it's insidious. It can destroy our quality of life, make it hard to work, make it hard to sleep, and make it hard to spend time with friends and family. But what if I told you that didn't have to be the case? In this video, we're gonna talk about proven therapies to beat chronic pain. Now don't turn away, because all of that starts right now. Welcome to part four in this four-part series on chronic pain in MS. Today, we're gonna to get super practical as I teach you ways to treat chronic pain. The good news, there are a bunch of super effective treatments. Let's jump in. For starters, I want to share that narcotics like opioids are not typically effective in treating chronic neuropathic pain. Narcotics can be very useful in acute pain. Like God forbid you get your leg cut off, a narcotic is a very useful medicine. But when you're dealing with chronic neuropathic pain, as commonly seen in the setting of MS, narcotics tend not to work very well. There are, however, a host of medicines which are much more effective and a lot safer. So the first class of medicine I like to discuss are seizure medicines, anti-epileptics. A seizure is an electrical storm on the brain, and these seizure medicines stabilize cell membranes, but they don't just do it for seizures, they do it throughout the brain and spinal cord, which turns out to be outstanding for treating forms of neuropathic pain. There's a host of seizure medicines that we commonly use to very effectively treat neuropathic pain. Some antidepressants turn out to be really good pain medicines. Now, we're not using them because the person has a mood condition, we're using them because they've been found to be very successful in treating pain. However, if you show me someone who's hurting, I'll show you someone who's sad about it, so I never mind getting a twofer. My favorite antidepressant to use to treat pain is a medication called Deloxetine, or Cymbalta. There's also two old school tricyclic antidepressant medicines, Amitriptyline, which is called Elevil, or Noratriptyline, which is Pamelor. Spasticity sucks, and over 70% of people impacted by MS experience spasms, cramps, and legs that are hard to bend. Fortunately, antispasmodic medicines are quite effective at treating most spasticity. I commonly use Baclofen and Xanaflex in my clinic with success. Now, all the medications I just discussed, actually all medications, have side effects. And it's really important that you work with your clinician to make sure that the medicine you're considering is safe for you. And topical agents can actually be a great way to treat some forms of pain. Topical lidocaine or capsaicin, topical CBD or menthol, in some cases, can help a lot. I'm fond of having a compounding pharmacy create a compounded pain cream. Oftentimes, I'll have them put lidocaine, Elevil, and gabapentin all in the same mix, rubbed on the skin. A question for you. Which neuropathic pain medicines have you tried before? And which have been the most successful? Please leave your answer in the comments section below. Someone else watching this will really gain a lot from what you have to share. It's a fool of a doctor who thinks that they can treat something as complex as chronic pain with just a pill. In order to beat chronic pain, we oftentimes need to use a multifaceted approach. And beyond medicines, this oftentimes involves lifestyle or behavioral changes. So I like to talk about several, starting with psychological treatments. One of my favorites is called cognitive behavioral therapy. This is very practical stuff, where patients learn how to take negative emotions and thoughts and reframe them to come up with empowered encouraging solutions to help them cope with their chronic pain. Someone who's stuck on the idea, I can't make the pain go away, could learn to reframe this. I can change my behaviors so that I can have some enjoyment with my kids this afternoon. Cognitive behavioral therapy oftentimes involves very practical skills and tools, like learning pacing, relaxation techniques, and problem-solving strategies. Next, we'll talk about acceptance commitment therapy, or ACT. Here, we teach patients to accept that they do have pain and yet focus and prioritize their lives on things that line with their values. We'll teach a patient to learn, yes, I have pain and I can't make it go away, but I can prioritize spending quality time with my family, which is important to me. Mindfulness-based stress reduction is one of my faves. It's really awesome stuff. Practicing mindfulness means you work on being in the present moment without prejudice. So you're trying to do something in the now, and you're not at the same time worried about something that happened yesterday or worried about something that may happen tomorrow. By developing mindfulness relaxation techniques, you can foster resilience against chronic pain. Mindfulness practices such as guided imagery or progressive muscle relaxation, mindful breathing or body scanning can all help reduce the emotional burden of pain. 
question, which psychological therapy has helped you the most grapple with pain? Put your answer in the comments section down below. Diet matters. I hate it when doctors say dumb stuff like it doesn't matter what you eat, because it does. Time and again in my clinic, I have seen that we can impact inflammation and pain levels by changing what we eat, by avoiding ultra processed foods, foods with trans fats, foods with high fructose corn syrup and the like. We can decrease inflammation, which is a major driver of pain. Instead, I encourage you to focus on single ingredient and whole foods. Throw in some anti-inflammatory foods, things that are high in omega-3s, for example, like fatty fish and flaxseed. One of the most effective and least utilized techniques to deal with chronic pain is physical activity. Now you might be saying, well, Dr. Boster, don't you understand how bad I hurt? And I do. But the reality is if you can incorporate movement into your life, it will diminish your pain. Seeking out activities like walking or anything in water, water aerobics, water Zumba, swimming, that can do wonders for controlling chronic pain. Pilates or Tai Chi are excellent exercises. And if you're not sure where to start, a pro tip is to reach out to a neurophysical therapist. Ask your neurologist to make a referral to NeuroPT and allow them to help guide you into a world of exercise where movement will help you decrease your pain considerably. A discussion on lifestyle change wouldn't be complete if we didn't discuss sleep. Simply put, restorative sleep is critical if we're gonna control your pain. If you're not getting seven plus hours of restorative sleep a night, we're making it so much harder to tackle chronic pain. If you have trouble falling asleep because of restless leg or because of pain and spasms and cramps, if you're waking up multiple times a night because you have to go to the bathroom, or if you're snoring and waking up with a headache because of sleep apnea, we need to address that. Ask for a referral to a sleep specialist and help them get your snooze on. It will do wonders to control your pain. What's your pro tip? What's been the most successful lifestyle change that you've made to help you control your pain? Please leave your answer in the comment section below and help empower someone watching this video to help take control of their life too. When traditional treatments aren't enough to control chronic MS pain, advanced interventions can offer life-changing relief. Let's explore some cutting edge options together. A TENS unit is portable and non-invasive. TENS stands for transcutaneous electrical nerve stimulation, where you have sticky pads that you place on your skin where it hurts, and it provides a mild electrical current which disrupts pain signals. Botulinum injections help relax overactive muscles. I've had great success in clinic using Botox to treat spasms and pain, as well as migraine headaches. One of the nice things about Botox is that it lasts for three months, so you stop in the office four times a year and control your spasms and migraines. Nerve blocks are targeted injections of anesthetic or a steroid to diminish nerve pain. They can be fantastic to treat trigeminal neuralgia or occipital neuralgia or certain types of back pain. Like with Botox, the effects last months and months, and so you may only need a couple injections a year. Sometimes severe spasticity doesn't respond to pills or Botox. And in these cases, we can have excellent control with minimal side effects using something called a baclofen pump. We implant a small device under the skin, which delivers liquid baclofen to the thecal sac. It delivers microscopic doses, which control spasticity without lots of side effects. I use them very frequently in my MS patients with great success. Similar to baclofen pumps, pain pumps are ideal for treating treatment-resistant neuropathic pain. They deliver small amounts of non-opioid medicines like Prealt, which is actually derived from a cone snail venom to block pain signals. Another fantastic tool for treatment refractory pain is Medicine by Edison, or a spinal cord stimulator. Small electrodes are implanted inside the skin on either side of the spinal cord, and they pass electrical signals and literally block pain. Recently, I've had several patients benefit from ketamine infusion therapy. Low-dose ketamine blocks NMDA receptors and reduces pain signals and is outstanding at helping with chronic medically refractory pain. Question for you, have you tried any of these advanced techniques? If so, which ones helped you the most? Sharing your experience will help someone else watching this video feel not so alone. Chronic pain is complex, it's invisible, and it can destroy our quality of life but it's also treatable. You're not alone and there are options out there. I want you to call your provider and ask for an appointment. Discuss with them some of the things you learned in this video today. Take that first step. This is the fourth in a four part series on pain. If you missed the other videos, click the link that's on your screen right now. And if you found this video to be helpful, do me a favor and give it a thumbs up. Also, if you haven't yet subscribed to the channel, 
please consider doing so. And until my next video, this is Aaron Boster saying be safe and take care.